Hello everyone, my name is Kunjila Kinpai. I'm a PhD student from the Neuroscience Laboratory at the University of Strathclyde. My PhD focuses on mental workload detection from EEG signals. This is going to be a presentation of my paper with the title on time series cost validation for deep learning classification model of mental workload levels based on EEG signals in collaboration with my supervisor, Dr. Yasha Mukherjee. Firstly, I'm going to give a brief introduction about mental workload level classification models that can be applied to classify subjects' mental workload levels and the approaches that are used to evaluate the classification models technique. Then I'll talk about the background, approach, and methodologies of our studies. Lastly, results and conclusions of this work will be described. The concept of mental workload plays an important role in human life from study design to driving fatigues and also pilot performance. A high mental workload level can significantly contribute to mental fatigue, decreases performance, and long-term health problems. To measure people's mental workload level, EEG signals have been investigated because these signals are highly correlated with a person's real-time mental workload status. Recently, machine learning has received much attention and have been developed to capture the variance characteristics of EEG signals to classify mental workload levels. So classification models have often been trained and evaluated using the cost variation techniques. In a traditional cost variation, an entry dataset is split into k equally sized subsets. For example, this dataset is divided into five subsets, and then the model is trained on four folds, while the remaining four is kept apart and used as the test set. The model training process is repeated five times with a different fold preserved for model evaluation each time. A typical cost validation technique's fundamental idea is that a correlation of the random variables is independent and identically distributed. However, in the case of temporal dependency in time series dataset of EEG signal exit, cost validation modification with respect to this dependency should be done for splitting data. Otherwise, there will be data leaking. Various studies aim to predict a subject's mental workload using machine learning model. For example, Amadi et al. detect a driver fatigue level using EG dataset with what record in fatigue and alert states. Then it's what randomly divide into five force in the cost validation step. One of these force is kept as the validation force and the others formed the training set. A five-fold code validation was also adopted by Sheng et al. In this study, the author used an EEG dataset containing 31 recording sections from five subjects and randomly divide independent recording sections into five groups. Then code validation was performed. The mental state of subjects were also identified by Cheng et al. In the model evaluation step of the study, the authors randomly extract 80% of the EEG signal to create a training set, and the remaining 20% of the signals were used as a test set. So, how the authors randomly divide the data from the various sections to training and test dataset might be overfitting. It is because human fatigue or subjects' mental workload develops over time. For example, a driver's fatigue level at the beginning part of a drive may be low, but it increases as time passes. So training a fatigue detection model by using the future fatigue level to detect the previous fatigue level might not result in an accurate model. This work presents how time series cost validation can be applied to deep learning models using EG signals. 
to evaluate the model, we split the data by ensuring that the test set consists of the data that were recorded after the data of the training set. Then we employ the expanding window and rolling window strategy in the model evaluation. In the expanding window strategy, the test data set is sequentially moved into the training set. The classification model recalibrated until all variable samples are used. The test data of the previous force will be used at our validation set. In the rolling window strategy, the amount of the training data is kept constant. The window is shifting forward the training and test data at each force. Every time new data enter the series, old data from the beginning of the series are ignored. Methods for our study include easy acquisition, artifact removal, feature engineering, model training, and classification. A publicly available dataset named Steel was used in our study. We remove undesired signal using an automated independent component analysis basis on adjust, then relevant EEG signal characteristics were captured in the feature extraction step. In this study, we took a sliding window uh, with a range of four seconds and a tip of one second. For extensive uses in the previous study, we should PSD alpha, PSD theta, skewnet, cryptosit, approximate entropy, and host features as the optimized feature set of the steel dataset in this scenario. Additionally, we also perform feature standardization before further analysis by F scale. Then we employ a five for time series cost variation in our model variation steps. We investigate the effects heap net of the expanding and rolling window, and also the effects of different training window size of each strategy. In this study, we perform the classification in two tasks. Task one is resting versus working state, and task two is low versus moderate versus high mental workload level uh, by using seven deep learning models. Overall, we can observe from the results shown in the box plot graphs that the overall model accuracy is steadily improved when the training box size is increased and model evaluated using the expanding window strategy achieve higher accuracy than those evaluated using the rolling window strategy for different training box sites in both tags. For the expanding window strategy, the highest accuracy score of uh, 93.53 and 81.38% were obtained when 90% of the data were used for model training from tax one and tax two respectively. For the rolling window strategy, the accuracy score in this scenario is slightly lower than the previous scenario. The higher accuracy score was uh, obtained when 90% of the data were used for model training as well, which are 91.78% and 80.44% from tax one and tax two respectively. Curiously, we observed that the model trained using 90% of the data with expanding window strategy has the best performance for task one and task two. Therefore, we investigate the effectiveness of using a block form of cost variation with the expanding window strategy and performing model training using 90% of the data for several deep learning models. This result revealed that the BTIU GIU model provide the highest model performance for both tasks In conclusion, in this paper, we explore a modification of the cost variation technique that can be applied to EG data that is a block form of cost variation with expanding and rolling window strategy. And we also investigate the effectiveness of the training variation and testing window size for each time series cost variation strategy. 
then we verified the town series cost variation strategy and the window size using several deep learning models. The ex experiment was performed by using a publicly available dataset called STIL. Our findings show that the deep learning models evaluate using time series cost variation with the expanding window strategy provide a better classification performance than those evaluated using a time series cost variation with a roaring window strategy. Moreover, for both classification tasks, every deep learning model achieved the highest accuracy when it was trained using 90% of the data. Moreover, our results also show that the BTIU GAU model achieved the highest accuracy of 95.9% and 84.56% for tax one and tax two respectively. Hence, in future work, we should consider applying the BGAU GAU model and time series cost variation with the expanding window strategy on auto mental workload datasets which are more complex. For example, some dataset were collected from different sections or days, which usually cause a non-stationary or covariate chip problem. Here are the list of the reference that we use in our study. And thank you for your attention.